There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. We are live inside Korakuen Stadium in Tokyo, Japan, as HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. Probably the greatest memories uh, that stand out right now is, you know, the Taylor Chavez fight will forever mm. be one that uh, just blew me away. Uh, the second one probably had to be, uh, I would say, uh, Tyson getting knocked out by Buster Douglas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we all had plans. I was going to stay in Japan for a couple of days and take a vacation. But my room was right across from Mike's at the new Otani Hotel in Japan. And all I heard for four days were people going into that, that room that probably should not have been going in and out of that room. And uh, there's some great pictures that I gave you uh, when he fought Tubbs, when he fought, uh, when he fought uh, Buster. But there's some great shots of all of us gathering around. There was Ray and Ross and Lampley. I think Lampley's first fight, if I'm not mistaken, was in Japan when he, when he fought Tubbs. You're right. You're right about yeah. that. That was his first fight. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's not bad memory for a 70 year old. Uh, <laughs> but 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 I, but I remember Jim flying into uh, in, into Japan, staying at the New Otani Hotel. Uh, earlier that morning, we had had an earthquake. I was like on the 32nd floor. But uh, but as far as the Buster uh, Douglas uh, Tyson, uh, you know, I, I knew something was going to happen. I knew that Mike was not prepared. Uh, probably one of the greatest uh, fights that will ever be on, on, on television. Um, that night. I, I remember where I was. I was in college, and uh, I was on the track team in college, and somebody had an off-campus apartment, and they had HBO, so there was like like 30 people there, and y you know back then, Tyson was demolishing most people in a round or two. It was an event. You, you were going to see an event. It was like, all right, let, let's see how Mike knocks this guy out, and so I'm sitting watching that fight, and I'm the boxing fan, so I'm watching it from... Beginning to end, people are kind of coming in the room and looking. So first round happens, no, no, no knockout. Second, third round, and Buster's starting to like pile up points. More and more people came into the room. By the time it got to the, I, I, I think it was the eighth round when Mike knocked Buster down. Magnificent. And there's a right hand uppercut, and down goes Douglas. I remember jumping up saying, finally, it's over, and it wasn't over. And Buster got up and proceeded to lay a hellacious beating on Mike Tyson. Shades of Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns. Douglas coming back with a left right. head. Tyson is wobbling. Tyson needs the ropes for support. Douglas wailing away. Brawling willingly just to try to get in the shot that will finish things in his Oh, the uppercut. What an uppercut by Douglas. And down goes Tyson. He, it's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. Let's go ahead and call it the biggest upset in the history of heavyweight championship fights. Say it now, gentlemen. James Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And I just remember being so stunned that that, that happened. But you were there in Japan. You spent time with Mike leading up to it. And you said you, you weren't shocked by the upset. Was he just, again, these are stories that you read about, you see documentaries about, but you, you were there. Was, that, was he so unfocused because he just assumed Buster's quitting fights before, I'm going to knock this guy out, I really don't need to train hard. Was he just out of his mind with arrogance and all the other stuff he had going on in his life? I, 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 I think that that played a certain role. I think Mike was so used to demolishing people so quickly that uh, that he took it for granted. I think also you had Buster Douglas, who also was on a mission 
yeah. fighting for his mother who had just died recently. Uh, mm -hmm. I also think that we found out something that we weren't really aware of is that Mike was suspect to a good jab, which uh, nobody had uh, really successfully planted on him. And, and, and it kind of threw Mike off his game a little bit. And, and I also think, and, and there will be people that will always mention this until the day that I die, is that knockdown uh, where Mike knocked down Bugless, uh, you know, if you go back and watch it, uh, was it 13 seconds, 14 yeah. seconds, yeah, 15 it seconds? Uh, it, it, it was, uh, it, it was uh, I think the referee was thrown off. I think everybody was so surprised that, uh, uh, you know, he could have very easily have been counting out and everybody would have gone home. But, uh, you know, a a as the jabs hit more and more and Mike was stretched out to more rounds and he wasn't in the best shape he was, uh, you know, w when, you know, the, the greatest, I I'm going to say one of the greatest uh, television shots in boxing will forever be Mark Payton's and 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 our and our handheld cameraman's incredible shot of Mike on his knees yep. looking lost trying to find his mouthpiece. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. To yep. put it back in his mouth, and that, and, and that, and that shot will forever remain with me as one of the greatest pieces of television art that I've ever seen. Yes, the and the 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 great you know Hall of Fame director Mark Payton. You're right. That shot. It. Li those are the things that live in your mind. Mike just. Mike felt how I think a lot of fans they didn't they couldn't believe what they were watching and Mike I'm sure it was all instinct and seeing him fumbling trying to put his mouthpiece in it was a uh, it was some moment but after the fight there was so much chaos you know they were saying it was a long count and the boxing organizations at first they weren't giving Buster the title there was all this crazy stuff going on behind the scenes did you have a chance after the fight to spend any time with Mike, or at that point, was it just chaos because he was with King and they were trying to get the fight overturned? The, the answer is the answer is uh, in the in my entire history of producing and being involved as either as a replay director as uh, an an AD, a television production truck is controlled chaos. Yep. Uh, there's so many things that are going on at one time. Everybody has a role. And while it's crazy and noisy to somebody who's never been it, it, it it's very organized. Yeah. This fight was the only time that I will ever remember that the control room, the truck, actually became part of the viewing audience. What we were witnessing was so surprising to all of us that Ross Greenberg, who was producing the show at the time, had to remind us and, and uh, you know with a with, with, with a scream that only Ross could bellow that we had to get control of ourselves because we had uh, momentarily lost focus on our job mm. becoming part of the event that was going on. Wow. As I mentioned, everybody thought that Mike was going to win. My plans were to stay for another week in Japan and vacation. Uh, at the end of the fight, the control truck was so out of control that what we were doing is we were scrambling with our production administrative team to book flights from Tokyo to New York ASAP 
because what was going to be an early knockout had now turned into the biggest upset ever in sports. Mm. And we needed to get back ASAP to New York to get ready to replay that show with a studio uh, event. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I missed out on my vacation in Japan. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it ended up becoming uh, what will probably be uh, one of the wildest 90 minutes ever in boxing history. And you were, you were um, directing replays for that fight, right? Yeah, Rick and, Rick and I were in the replays. Ross was producing. Mark was directing. Uh, you know, it, 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 I mean, it, it, it was that long ago. And, uh, you know, I, we, I, I just remember that if you go back and watch that fight, it's, it's just so beautifully put together and directed really by yep. Mark and, and by Ross. And, and Rick and I were on our A game with our uh, with our technicians in the replay room and uh and wow i mean to have four or five replay i mean it it was just uh, you know replay after replay after replay and uh you know from the knockdown to him on the ground to looking for the mouthpiece to, to it was just a a potpourri of incredible uh individual sports moments that can be broken down into little stories individually. Uh, no, I never spoke to I, Mike. I never spoke to, you know, I never spoke to the buster. Uh, my, our job was to, to pack up our bags and the amazing yeah. job. Yeah. The amazing job was how quickly they got uh, 20 of us on a flight a.m. the next morning back to New York. And uh, I remember it, we worked about 24 hours getting that show ready for the rebroadcast. Yeah, because I, um, I remember the rebroadcast. Tyson had his shades on and, 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 and Buster was there. You know what? I, I have to give you guys credit too, you and Rick and Tate, because I remember watching that fight. And as it became apparent that something special was happening that this could be an upset you guys rolled in some footage that you probably didn't think you would need or were going to use yeah, this is there was sparring footage of tyson getting knocked down by greg page former yep. heavyweight champion greg page yep. and you guys put that in there and it just showed that you know this might not be an accident what we're seeing happening in this ring tyson you know fighters get dropped but he got dropped by greg page in, in training, um, and you guys got that in there, and it was just another part of the story that we were watching. So I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, wow, He's, this might not be a fluke. I mean, he might lose this fight, and sure enough, he did. And you talk about um, uh, the, the, the flight to New York and the show you guys did in New York. Um, Tyson's mood seemed... Well, without talking about that, when you were in New York and Mike was in New York, at that point, was there really no access to him? Did you have a chance to talk to him at all? Or, or was no, he no, he, no, he, he I, I think from that moment, he went into uh, witness protection behind, <laughs> Don, behind Don King at that point. Right. Uh, I, I remember having a lot of conversations with Don, uh, but Don was pretty much trying to to do his best uh, to get that fight overturned by the long count. And, yeah. and that was, that was, uh, you know, that was Don's mission. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I would say probably after that, uh, Mike and I didn't spend much time together uh, ever again. And, and, uh, and, the, and at that point, I think the heavyweight belt just got kind of passed around uh, from one to another, and and I think, and you would know this better than I. I, I don't think anybody reigns supreme uh, very long after that. 